Yes, I'm behind the flowers. Because the collaboration I'm doing today with Ms. Anya Stamper from Pink Sweets here on the YouTube is based on all the spring flowers. We've got all manner of flowers represented. There are white flowers and purple flowers and green buds. And, and, and blossoms and, you know, crocus and little violets and white cherry blossoms and pink cherry blossoms and all manner of stuff. We decided since it had been a while, since we'd done a collaboration, we would do something spring. Now, if you really want to see what this looks like in all the pretty colors, you need to go this way. I'm going to go that way. I know. Now, I should have said a few things about this in the intro. Heaven only knows what I'm going to say. Anyway, <clears throat> I was born and raised in Alexandria, Virginia, which is just across the river from Washington, D.C. About this time of year, we would be doing the traditional cherry blossom watch. It's part of spring. Now, here where I am in Baker County, Oregon, we're at the 45th parallel. We're halfway between the equator and the North Pole. We're at a definitely higher latitude than Alexandria, Virginia. We're also at definitely a higher elevation. We're at about 3,200 here. Alexandria is pretty much sea level. They're, yeah, they right on it. They're on the Potomac just before it starts getting ready to head in and dump into Chesapeake Bay. And then Chesapeake Bay goes straight out to the Atlantic. But, being as Washington, D.C. is our federal city, at some point, don't remember exactly when, and I'm being lazy, I don't want to go look it up, the Japanese government gifted the U.S. government with cherry trees. Now, these are not fruit-bearing cherry trees, but they bloom incredibly beautiful and since part of what this is about is spring blossoms and Anya Stamper and I met in the Washington DC area Miss Pink Sweets is one of those people that reminds me of what it's like to grow up in that area with all of the flowers. I mean, we had flowers everywhere and the Park Service was putting flowers everywhere. And the pink and white blossoms from the cherry trees was spectacular. It really was. And people would go out walking just to look at flowers. Now, one tree that I do not miss that blooms early in the spring is the Bradford pear. They put those in just about every subdivision for a while because they hold shape. They bloom just copious amounts of blooms. But the Bradford pear is another non-fruiting tree. And what it lacks in fruit, it made up for in pollen density. 
as soon as those trees started blooming, my face would just stuff up shut. Now here I have a little problem with the fact that the, the pines outnumber the deciduous trees. But I'm not so worried about that this year because, you know, those little masks that the hubby has been making, well, they don't just work for protection from ugly bugs. Filters the pollen pretty well, which I think is wonderful. All right. I've got my face primer on. I've got my eye primer on, the usual AOA Studio stuff. And since it's spring and everybody's thinking about pastels, I got this. It's the L8 Colors 16. Lots and lots of pretty pale color. And it wasn't bad. It was four bucks. I'm not screaming. So I just need to figure out where I want to start off with this. Because to tell you the truth, I'm not sure where I want to go. But I want a lot of flowery colors. I like flowery colors. That was my computer telling me I have an alert of some sort. Anyway, I'm going to start with this brown down here because you got to have your dirt. Gotta have some dirt. Yes, I am way above the natural crease. And that's okay. I have hooded eyes. Now, if you want a really good tutorial on dealing with hooded or deep set eyes, which have very similar problems, with the deep set eyes, you get the rubbing together of where it folds under from the upper lid and from the lower lid. And they just kind of tuck back into the socket and hide in there and rub together. With the hooded lids, the upper lid folds down to either almost or right at your lash line. And you get that rubbing thing going again. So you lose color and you have stuff that migrates. But if you want a really good description and tutorial, go check out 4F Beauty. Miss Angie has a specific teaching channel and has a great clip on most of her... Um, her vids that tells you specifically how to tell the difference and how to do workarounds. There's also Wayne Goss who does stuff for hooded eyes. He's a professional makeup artist. Does a lot of stuff for, for photography and some film stuff and you know weddings and all manner of stuff like that and he himself has hooded eyes so when he demonstrates on his hooded eyes you've got a much better idea of what he's doing now like I said I've got hooded eyes Angie has deep set eyes so you'll be able to tell the difference just looking between the two of us as to what to look for in the way your eyelids fold. 
Now, if you're really lucky, you have eyelids like Anya Stamper, Miss Pinksweet. Because she's got those, those gorgeous big eyes that's like big doe eyes. And you've got all this clear space on your eyelids to do stuff. And it's like, dang. I wish I could do that. Gorgeous, gorgeous eyelid space. All right. Now, again, see, I'm way above the crease because when I open my eyes, the upper lid is all the way down here. And if you don't have your color above the crease, if it doesn't extend up that high, nobody's going to see it. So, you know, I kind of end up creating a remade crease. So that I've got what I want for color where I need it. Now, guys, I want you to understand something. So, listen up, people. I normally wear glasses. I don't have contacts currently. They're expensive. So when I take my glasses off to do this, I'm pretty much out of luck when it comes to seeing exactly what I'm doing, which is why every so often I will be getting right up in the mirror and trying to see if I've got anything even close to even on here. Some days I do. Some days not so much. Let's see. What do I want to do next? I don't know what I want to do. I'm going to do some purple. Because the crocuses are up and have been up for a bit. Such pretty things. Get those little crocuses going. Now, some of them are a deeper purple, but the deeper purple I have in this palette is more of a raspberry, and it's a little early for raspberry. Like I said, I carry this up so that when my eye is completely wide open, this area down here is going to be covered. You're not going to see the purple that's on there unless I open my eyes. I'm trying to think of all of the all of the plants we have in the yard that are up. I've seen some white hyacinth. I've seen the snowdrops. The forsythia is trying to bloom. We've got blooms coming up on a couple of our little fruit trees that we planted last year. It's still going to be a couple of years before we get any fruit off of them, but they're definitely coming up. One of them didn't, we picked it up late. It was already down to like two bucks on discount, get rid of it. 
and then the mule deer we have around here decided that all the little leaves looked really tasty and stripped them down. We're probably going to have to replace that one tree. But the pear and the apple seem to be doing pretty well. Which I'm appreciative of. Now, if you've ever seen, if you've not seen a mule deer, but you're familiar with the cottontails, the, the, the white-tailed deer that run around in the Virginia area, you take a full-grown buck from those white tails, and you'd be looking at, yeah, pretty close to a yearling buck here with the, the mule deer. They're huge. I mean, huge. They really are. They're big. Okay. Now, I don't have a yellow yellow to go with, like, daffodils. I've got a sort of yellow. It's hard to tell in here if it's a yellow yellow or a lime green. This one's a gold, and it's just not right for a daffodil. So now I'm trying to figure out what I want to do next. And I think I'm going to take some of the bright green that's in that top end and do the tree bud color. have your tree bud tree buds and all the other little flower buds And then, I'm going to go back and pick up that sort of brownie color. And go this way. about the hiccups guys Get that green again. Come in under here. Now, 
Now some of that green has already kind of swung down into the corner. But I'm going to kind of bougie it up a little. I'll take one of these pencil brushes. I'm going to pick up that yellowy, greeny, limey, whatever the heck it is. I'm going to get right in that corner. It's starting to look pretty good. Okay, I'm going to run away for a couple of minutes and do things like slap on my foundation and find my eyebrows and that kind of thing and then we'll come back and see what else this is going to look like alrighty got my foundation on powdered did a first spray Stuck some white eyeliner on just because I felt like it. Put some, put the first coat of mascara on. I've got a little bit of pale blue running along the waterline. And it's time to do some more stuff. I'm going to grab up stuff. Okay, this is a Wander Beauty piece. Um, Costa de Rey. And it's, it's, yeah, it, it, if you go out in the early spring and stay out and do some walking around, checking the flowers, you're going to get a little bit of sun, but it's still going to be kind of pale. And this fits. And no, I don't go over the tattoo. I don't put foundation over the tattoo. I don't put any other face color over the tattoo. That is my little friend. And I like her to show. Now, like with any other powder or color bit you want to put on your face, some days you can get a little heavy handed because it kind of feels like I've got a little much over here. So, you know, I did my powder brush and you just kind of dust it back a little bit because there's always especially if you've used the powder brush a couple of times and all you're doing is dusting over you're going to have some leftover powder in the brush that you will be able to use to kind of dial back some of the other stuff <laughs> And if it's not quite enough, just pick up your powder again. Now, let's see. Next, I'm going to use my Ciate London. I 
because it's pink. It's very pink. It's a lot of pink. It is much pink. There is much pinkness. Much pinkness. Yes, if I look a little extra dewy, it's not the foundation, it's not the primer, it's starting to get warm around here. And my bedroom window, which is right there, is on the west side of the house. Which means I get the end of day sunlight pretty thoroughly. Whether I want it or not. Now this is one of the little Ciate London um, blushes that was part of the big controversy as to whether or not the private label stuff that's made in China to make it easier for things like Ipsy and, and um, whatever other box, you know, boxy charm and whatever, makes it easier for them to afford these samples. But whether or not it's easier to afford the samples because they're going through a different manufacturer and there's a change to some of the ingredients and you were trying to try out one of their fancy formulas with all the fancy ingredients and you know is it really fair that okay yeah it saved the ipsy and boxy charm people a few bucks on the price of the uh, the sample but is it really a sample if it's not the same ingredients therefore not the same formula you're not trying out the same formula you've got the same name but it's not the same formula Does it really count as a sample of the more expensive formula? Because one of the things they did was switch out one of the other powders for talc, which some people have issues with talc. And... Talc is not the same consistency. It is not the same chemical as the powder in the original. But they're shipping it to us in the sample boxes and going, oh yeah, same stuff. I have a problem with that. Now me, I don't get too head up over things like the talc because for the most part the talc that was causing everybody so much headache is not the same kind of talc that goes into everything else. And the, the issue of where it was being placed was a problem. The baby powder that was being used on people in nursing homes and that kind of stuff, it was sourced in a way that allowed way more of 
the I'll get it in a minute. The other mineral that produces in the same strata and in the and kind of side by side, the asbestos, it allowed more of that into the overall product than what normally gets into cosmetics. Now in both cases, this was meant to be external use. However, if you are powdering intimate places on your body that are adjacent to mucous membranes, it's very likely you are going to pick up some of that powder and it's going to end up where you didn't expect it. Now, with the asbestos, they are, they are alleging that some of the people who were exposed ended up with various forms of cancer in the mucous membranes. And I'm going, okay, they're alleging. I haven't seen any of the science. I haven't seen any of the reports. So I don't know for sure. I just don't know. But that's not my problem with the blush. It just isn't. Okay, I'm going to do something strange. I don't normally do lip pencils. Don't care. Doing it anyway. See, I never got in the habit of lip pencils. My grandmom didn't use them. My mom didn't use them. And yeah, now I got them. And I still never remember to use them. That one is called Soft Pink. And I'm going, well, yeah, it's pretty much a soft pink. Yeah, some schwitzy. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the pins. Get that left out just a tad. And then I'm going to use Pink Frost LA Colors. I like LA Colors stuff. Nobody at me about this. I know it's technically too young a color for me, according to all the fashion gurus. And guess what? They can go fashion somebody else. I'm not having it. And then I have, this is Shayna B. Miami, and this is their Guava Glow Highlighter. And I'm doing this because it's pink. It's spring. It's pink. We're doing 
pastel -y, daffodil -y, little pale flowers like the pink cherry blossoms and some of the white cherry blossoms and violets and crocus and little green buds <laughs> now I really like this stuff I picked, got this in an Ipsy bag the Shana B Miami but and it's a great color. It really is. The Guava Glow is a great color. But it's dusty. It's dusty. And it's it's subtle. Sometimes I like subtle. Sometimes I want to bling it. If I really want to bling it, I have a tendency to go after my Ofra sample. I like the Ofra. <sighs> itchy. I hate that. I hate when my nose gets itchy. It's very annoying. Alrighty, here we go, going out tripping through the pastel flowers. Don't forget to go check out Anya's, I'm going to put hers in the, in the description so you'll have a link, you'll have it easy. Everybody stay safe, stay well. Don't argue with me. Be good.